Hey there, it's Alana. I received a really good question about how to find the midpoint um, based on the graph, and it's kind of a complicated answer, so I thought I would make you a video and explain it that way. <laughs> okay, so how to find the midpoint depends on what kind of graph you're looking at. So for example, I have up here a histogram. Now remember, histograms use the lower class and upper class boundaries. So for example, so for example here, when you look at this, it says 60 to 70 to 80. The way you can interpret that is that the classes would be 60 to, well, everything up to 70, but not including 70. So it's really 69.9999999. We often don't show all those decimal places of nines. And the next one would be 70 to 79.999 and so on, right? 80 to 89 and so on, or 89.9. So the midpoint is the halfway spot on this axis. So if this number is at 60 and this number is at 70, you need the halfway spot in between. Okay, but what it really is is the halfway spot between 60 and 70 because this is really 69.9999999 going on forever. So you take 60 and 70, you add them up. So use parentheses, 60 plus 70 close your parentheses, divide it by 2, and you've got 65. That's the midway spot between 60 and 70. And the next one would be equal to 70 plus, oopsie, don't forget your parentheses, 70 plus 80, close parentheses, divide by 2. Now notice these are 10 apart, just like 60 and 70 are 10 apart. That's because your class width is also 10 on this particular graph. Okay. You can tell that because it's literally how wide the bars are. That's where the word class width comes from. So it's the horizontal distance here between 60 and 70, 70 and 80, 80 and 90. It's always 10. So the midpoints, which would be the middle of the bars, also has to be 10 apart. All right, so that's how to do histograms. Let me find a frequency polygon. Okay, here we have a frequency polygon, a.k.a. a line graph, but with... Um, quantitative data. And when you look at it, you can see it's got these classes, right? So this is 5, and then there's a hash mark in here, and then this is 25. So you're thinking, okay, this must be 15, halfway in between, in between 5 and 25. So it's 5, 15, 25, 35, 45, 55, and so on. All right. If you type those in over here, you can see, right, 5, 15, 25, and actually what would be right before 5. Insert. So if, if every one of them is 10 apart, then the one back here would be negative 5, right, which would be 10 below 5, and this one's 10 above 5, and so on. The thing about a frequency polygon is that these are already the midpoints. Okay. Frequency polygons, by definition, use the midpoints in the graphing because you need a single value to represent an entire class. And the best way to do that is to pick one number that would represent an entire class. So this number 5 is really representing all the numbers between, well, here, let's do this one. 15 is actually representing everything that is, <clears throat> let, me, let me put it to you this way. What's the class width here? The class width is 10, right? You can see it because 10 and 15, or 5 and 15 and 25 are all 10 apart. If that's the case, then half the width would be 5, right? Okay, so what's 5 lower than 15? 10. And 5 above 15 would be 20, so we would do 19.9999. That means this guy gets to do 20 to 29.99 and so on. Okay, which means this number right here would be 0 to 9.99. Right, it's technically it's 9.99999, but we don't really show all those decimal places, okay? So in this case, the class width is 10, the class midpoints are given to you in the graph, and you could figure out the classes from there. There's the lower and the upper limits. Generally, they don't do that many decimal places on the upper limits, but, you know, there you go. Okay, now i got to give you an ogive. Actually, you know what, we don't have time left in this video for an ogive, so I'm going to make a second video that will go over how to find the width and the midpoints for ogives. So I'll see you in that one. Bye-bye.